Welcome back to the class Computational Neuroscience, Neural Dynamics of Cognition. The attractor model is a very abstract concept. Memory recall is represented as a flow to the fixed point. But as it stands, it's not yet very biological. For example, 50% of the pixels are on in each pattern. That's not realistic. Can we change the model such that we would have a lower mean activity of the patterns? Can we generalize the model such that it would work for asymmetric connections or for a better neuron model? Or can we separate excitatory and inhibitory neurons? Can we work with a low probability of connections? And in the end, how does this relate to neural data? So, so far, we had the standard scenario of the Hopfield model where in each pattern, one line is a pattern, 50% of the pixels are black, 50% are white, such that if a memory pattern is recalled, 50% of the neurons are active. So it's convenient to change to a normalization where each pattern is, has pixels 0 and 1. So if I'm in pattern mu equal 3, for example, then the first neuron has a white pixel, 0, the second has a white pixel, 0, the fourth has a black pixel, 1. Okay. So now let's work with a weight matrix, connection weights, where we have Ci mu minus b, some constant, Cj mu minus a, minus a. a should be the mean activity of the patterns. So if we say 10% of the pixels are black in the target pattern, then A is 0.1. To get back to the standard Hopfield model, let's assume we have a mean activity of 0.5 and also a constant B equal to 0.5, in which case I connect to white pixel by a plus one and mix black white gives a weight of minus one with some constant and a sum over all the patterns mu. So this is the proposition for a weight from neuron J to neuron I, Ci mu minus B, Cj mu minus A, where, where A is the mean activity. For the moment, we keep B as an arbitrary parameter. We could, for example, take B equal A, or B equal 0, or B equal 1. We have worked with overlaps. So the new condition for the overlap, the new definition is, I sum over all neurons, J equal 1 to N, I take the state of the neuron, J, and then multiply with cj mu minus a. So I subtract this mean activity a. Now, let's work for the moment with deterministic dynamics. So we say the state of neuron i in the next time step, t plus 1, is the sign of the total input. But what's the total input to neuron i? It's wij sj of t, where I sum over all neurons j. Now I use my weight matrix, I copy it from above, so I have c i mu minus a constant b, c j mu minus a, and then I multiply with s j of t. I sum over mu, that comes from the weight matrix, and I sum over all neurons, j equal 1 to n, and then take the sign of everything. And let's not forget the constant c, so I put it in front here. Now we see something interesting. I have to sum over all neurons j, sj, cj mu minus a. This is exactly this term this term, sum of all. So this gives just m mu of t. This is the overlap with pattern mu. I still have to sum over all mu. I have here a factor of ci mu minus b. m has this constant c. I would have to have a 1 over c here in front. But since I'm looking at a sine function, the constant doesn't really play a role. So what we see is that the state of neuron i in the next time step, 
is given by the overlaps. Since this is true for every neuron i, the overlap in the next time step, which involves a sum over all neurons i, depends on the overlap at time t. To summarize, even for low activity patterns, the equation for overlaps is similar to the case that we had before, and that means that attractor dynamics is possible. The overlap with the pattern mu in the next time step is just some function of the overlap in earlier time steps. And this will be true if patterns are orthogonal or nearly orthogonal as they would be the case for low activity random patterns. Now, you see here that there is no need for symmetric weights. I have a constant b in there, which I can choose freely. It will change a little bit the way the update equations work, but I don't need symmetric weights. And this means I can redo the capacity calculations that we did last week. You remember the random, the random walk arguments? So we can repeat these calculations also for the case of low activity patterns. This means a first generalization that has been done, we can work with low activity patterns.